With the 2022 housing market coming to a close this year, uh, you likely have a lot of questions top of mind. Uh, number one being, what is going to happen with interest rates? Will they remain steady? Will they start to come down or will they go even higher? Um, you know, a lot of people's decisions hinge on what those interest rates look like. The next question might be, what's going to happen with foreclosures? Will there be a glut of foreclosures that enter the market and further drive down prices? And finally, you may be asking, well, should I move this year? Should I not move this year? Should I sell? Should I buy or wait until next year in 2023 when the smoke clears and see or when the smoke hopefully clears and see what happens and, and make a decision then? So uh, today in this uh, edition of the monthly market report for November 2022, I'm going to try and shed some light on those uh, topics that you have. So first and foremost, interest rates. Interest rates have been pretty um, wild over the past year. I mean, we started the year off at around three and a half percent and that uh, range there. And we have skyrocketed all the way up to seven percent uh, as of you know a couple of weeks ago. Um, now, last week, we did receive some economic data on inflation that was positive and the stock market reacted in a positive manner. And now interest rates have come back down. I just got an update this morning um, from a local lender that they have about six and a half percent interest rates uh, at this time. So um, some good news there. Um, but first and foremost, what do the experts predict for interest rates? Um, as you can see, Mortgage Bankers Association, uh, National Association of Realtors, and uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, on average, say the first quarter is going to bring about a 6.48% interest rate, uh, second quarter a 6.28% interest rate, and then third quarter 6.15% with uh, finishing the year out at 5.98% interest rate. Now, these are just predictions. They can be wrong. Uh, in fact, they were wrong um, this year because of the uh, rapid uh, interest rate hikes that the Fed deployed sooner than people were expecting uh, to bring down inflation. But nevertheless, uh, that is the, the overall reason uh, those interest rates came up so quickly is that inflation battle that's still happening. Um, now, uh, if in fact we're starting to see a trend in inflation and it starts continuing to go down, these these predictions could be spot on. Uh, hopefully, that is the case uh, because it seems like right now buyers and buyers are more comfortable or are most comfortable at the five to five percent interest rate. Uh, and you may be wondering, well, how are we getting to the five percent interest rate? Um, and that's through buy downs, you know, buying the interest rate down from a seven to a five uh, or a four nine uh, will be quite easy uh, for people at, at this stage of the ball game because, um, you know, sellers have a lot of equity, so they can help out with that process. Um, buyers that had you know, the fifteen twenty thousand dollars over asking price that weren't able to purchase a home um, previously have the capital to buy their interest rates down and that's really what's happening with quite a few buyers these days is they are buying those rates down whether it's themselves or the seller providing those funds to buy the rates down and that's how they're making it affordable um, and those buy downs typically are um, temporary buy down so the um, the goal is to buy the rate down now um, and then refinance in the future usually a couple of years from now um, so <clears throat> Hopefully that will come to fruition uh, as far as the interest rates. Uh, we see a moderation in interest rates, but we could be wrong and we could see higher rates depending on inflation. The next piece we want to go over is uh, the foreclosures. Uh, what do the foreclosures look like? Right now, as of September, according to this graph here, we were at uh, about 2% distressed sales. That's uh, short sales and foreclosures. Um, and if you go all the way back to 2012 there, you'll see that we were um, at about 35% uh, distress sales. So we are at just a fraction of what it used to be. Um, we can stand to double the foreclosure rate easily and you know into the 4% range. And it's really not, you know, not seeing that good, that would make a big impact on housing prices. So if you're counting on foreclosures making a big impact, I wouldn't uh, bet on it 
Um, so this second graph here shows, the green line shows the availability of um, mortgage credit. And after the great financial crisis, mortgage credit uh, guidelines were tightened. So that green line plummeting there shows the tightening guidelines of uh, getting mortgage credit. So um, we have, you know, in a nutshell, and in my interpretation of this graph is a lot of strong homeowners in homes that have the uh, ability and wherewithal to navigate uh, a market that might uh, have some turbulence. So they will rather execute a, a short sale rather than just let a home go into foreclosure. I, I can't tell you how many times I came across homeowners in the past that you know had uh, the ability to do a workout and they didn't know it or they had the ability to do a short sell and they didn't know it um, and they you know end up losing a home for no no reason so you know long story short i think that this crop of homeowners that we have right now representing the vast majority of the market is more educated more uh, able to navigate that so uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't put all my chips on a bunch of foreclosures coming to rescue um the shortage of housing supply that there is um, pivoting to local numbers and i'll have more uh, information on my website at maverickhomesandneighborhoods.com uh, more uh, insights in the market but uh, overall we have um, we have seen uh, a 13.5 percent increase in median uh, sales price over the past year this is as of october um, it could have been higher had we not uh, seen these aggressive rate hikes. It could probably could have been 17% uh, or so. Um, but nevertheless, uh, it's been pretty steady at about 300,750 300, for the last couple of months. Um, where we go from there, we'll just have to see. Um, it, it may go up. It may come down. Um, the experts even are split on what we're going to see next year. And... Um, I can't tell you for certain what's going to happen, but what I can tell you is that we're still about three months worth of inventory. We're, that's still a seller's market. Price changes are happening every day. Um, people are renegotiating their sales price to get to a sale. Um, we'll continue to watch that. And when the, the trend uh, of sold properties uh, rises above those price changes, then we'll, we'll know that we've reached a, you know, kind of a moderate uh, uh, happy median uh, in prices. Um, new listings, we are up 2.7%. So new newer listings are up. We're about even here for the, over the last couple of years as far as new listings coming to the market. Um, but overall inventory, overall inventory did rise about 27% over 2021. Um, that's still under uh, what we had in 2020. Um, and uh, so we're we're still we're still in a situation where we don't have quite enough inventory out there. Uh, yes, we're seeing price changes, but uh, we're also seeing we're still seeing healthy sales. A lot of people getting their homes sold um, with different expectations in mind. You know, you're not necessarily going to see bidding wars every single time with every home, but uh, they do still happen. So if you have any questions. Um, about this or you're thinking about making a move uh, let's connect um, and uh, get the answers to the questions that you have about the local housing market that way you can make the best decision that fits your needs thanks and i'll see you guys in the next video